This past week, I've been playing Factorio as recently the developers mentioned the price of the game would be increased in anticipation of their departure from early access in a few months. That price change is now taking effect and the game is currently listed at $30, €25 or £21 respectively. Factorio never particularly struck me as a game I'd be too interested in. Build increasingly complex items by designing assembly lines and factories that culminate in the launch of a rocket. I mean, to me, it sounded like an arbitrary loop without any real aim, but at the same time, it was, and very much still is, the second highest rated game on Steam of all time, only to be surpassed by Portal 2. So at a certain point, you need to just bite the bullet and listen to the 30,000 people that came before you and recommended the game. And that's what I did. Now, it's difficult to convey the fun that you have in Factorio through a video or a stream. It's something you really need to play and trust that you'll enjoy it when you're in it. For this reason, I won't simply take you on a tour of what I've achieved so far, as showing you something that I'm actually quite proud of won't give you any real satisfaction. But instead, I'm going to talk about an aspect of the game that I didn't even know was there, and it's probably overlooked by a lot of people. Factorio is an extremely vacant and lonely game. Crash landed, the campaign begins with a lone figure standing tall in an eerie alien landscape. Not knowing what happened to the others, you fashion some basic tools and begin exploring. It doesn't take long before you find a ruined facility that you need to reactivate to build more advanced tools. Eventually you build radars that pick up a signal and let you know that you're not alone. However, the signal is located 200 kilometers away, so you need to fashion a vehicle to take you there. When you arrive at the location, everyone is already dead from the natives' attacks. As you create pollution, the natives become increasingly hostile. This in turn makes you feel like the bad guy, and at least for me, made me feel a little bit guilty. I'm the one creating factories, building machines, and polluting the landscape, and they're the ones just trying to defend it. Now don't get me wrong, Factorio's story isn't much more than a few console messages on the bottom left of your screen, but it's the atmosphere and the mood of the game that has me enamored with it. The steampunk art style is extremely dark and realistic looking with gears and levers pulling and pushing items around. Moss-covered railways and junk metal litter abandoned outposts, and alien bodies remain there for a long time as they decompose, reminding you of their struggle against your machines. Now some of you might think that this doesn't make a difference to the game. After all, it's a game about intricate factory design and transportation of goods and materials, which it is. But for me, if Factorio was like cartoonish and aesthetic, upbeat and lighthearted and lively, it probably wouldn't hold my attention. It's because I'm alone, in a mysterious world, and it's my machines causing chaos that makes me want to keep playing. I eventually want to find survivors and find out what happened, at least in the campaign. Now I'm not sure if the developers will continue the campaign and add more when 1.0 releases in a few months, but for me, I think they have huge potential to create an amazing tale in the world they've built. Either way, I did end up getting hooked on the core gameplay, so I started up a sandbox game and have around 10 hours in that now. The game essentially revolves around your technology tree. It can take a while to even get technology research going, as it requires you to refine materials and combine them to create different science packs. Now, science packs are shoved into science buildings and fuel your technology research, and over time, you'll unlock and discover new ways to make more complex science packs to research more complex technologies. As you uncover new resources and locations that are miles apart, you can create railway networks to transport goods to and from those areas. So a simple one I have going is an iron ore gathering facility that loads up ore onto a train, takes it to a furnace that processes the ore and feeds it back into my main factory, where the iron plates are then turned into a whole bunch of different goods. As I mentioned, the satisfaction comes from building these things yourself. Remember, everything you see here that isn't nature was placed down by me. You can do incredibly complex things with automation technologies to really get the most out of your base and run things efficiently. As I've expanded more and more, it's getting harder and harder to both keep track of where things are going and to fight off the increasingly hostile natives. Something I'm in the process of sorting out and getting working now is fluid dynamics, which is mining oil, refining it, shipping it. This then gave rise to the need for specialized mini factories that use oil to make petroleum, plastics and sulfur. And those go on to become circuit boards and batteries and so on, it all breaks down. Unfortunately, oil is already getting a bit short, so I'll need to go exploring soon to find more. And then there's uranium and nuclear power, which I haven't even started on yet. So the game has a lot of content to offer in a very engaging way. Unlike most builder games and things of this nature, you're never just waiting around in Factorio for things to be made. 
It's all about economies of scale to get things done quicker and more efficiently. But you're always needed somewhere and often you can't get there fast enough before a machine needs to be refitted or refueled. And when that happens, you basically have to ask yourself, how can I make it so that I never have to refit this myself? How can I make it so that the machines harvest ore, process it, refine it, use it, protect it and repair themselves? As with pretty much everyone I've talked to, I've become hooked on Factorio. That arbitrary loop that I mentioned at the beginning, yeah, I mean, it's pretty arbitrary, but it's also extremely satisfying to play out over and over. This is what I feel makes recommending Factorio hard to do. It's hard to convince someone on the outside that you'll want to solve transport puzzles and make complex machines. It's also a hard sell to say that this game will consume your life, which it is doing to me. The game also has multiplayer, which I've played around 8 hours of as well with a friend, and two minds are definitely better than one as we correct each other's mistakes and come up with plans on how to build things better. You can play with even more people and even make enemies, trying out PvP where you can attack each other's bases in a giant game of tower defense meets resource gathering. In this respect, Factorio kinda has something for everyone. It can be played alone, or it can be played with friends. You can play in a map editor if you just love building things, or you can play challenge campaigns or tailor the sandbox experience for you. Factorio definitely deserves its place on Steam. The developer has created something extremely engaging and rewarding to play and I personally have huge respect for them both in terms of the design of the game and how they price it. It's a flat price for the game that you cannot find on key websites and they have a strict no sale policy, the price is just what it is. It's an extremely principled stance to take and it's something that I greatly admire. So that's it for this short video on Factorio. When 1.0 releases, I'd love to cover it and do a review potentially for those who still want to wait before giving in to the inevitable. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please consider leaving a like, maybe throw me a subscribe if you want to see more about cool games like this one. My name is Darren, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.